Hello and uh, welcome to the first lecture proper for uh, Phys 1020 Stars and Galaxies. So as promised, we're going to start with our uh, nearby star, the Sun, uh, as the first topic uh, in this uh, module. And um, so today in the uh, lecture, we're going to go through uh, several different aspects. We're going to start just with some basic properties to really give us a feel for some numbers. Uh, and we'll also introduce some very important notation that we will use throughout the whole uh, course because basically whenever we study other stars and even galaxies we relate everything back uh, to the to our sun as, a, as convenient units so that will introduce that uh, in the second part we'll go on to look at the sort of lifetime and energy sources uh, of the sun what what keeps the sun shining and uh, then in the final part uh, we will have a look at some of the phenomena in the atmosphere of the sun. So, as I mentioned in the introductory lecture, then um, you know I think I would prefer it if you if you took your own notes. Obviously, you're going to have the rec these recordings. You're going to have copies of the PowerPoint slides as well. They're they're there on the Minerva site. Um, but you know, as you want to add in your own uh, reading. Um, around the subject then you know you might want to add to those so think about how you're going to do that and how you're going to organize your notes um, you know, it's really up to you uh, but you know, i would recommend taking your own notes and then you can you know add add to that as you go along okay so let's get underway so let's have a look at some of the fundamental uh, properties of this object so here's a we're going to start with a picture. Uh, so this is a picture of the sun. As you'll see uh, in, in the next lecture, actually, this is quite an unusual view of the sun, but uh, I wanted to start this way. So you can see that it, you know, it's a beautiful uh, sphere. Basically, it's just hot, glowing gas. And um, so this is the uh, object that we want to get to grips with first. So let's think about some fundamental properties uh, of of this object of the sun. So what should we look at first? Well, the mass is a good place to start. So how much mass, how much material is contained in that glowing uh, globe that we call the sun? Um, so the next few slides are just basically really gonna quote some large numbers at you. Um, so the mass of the sun is two times 10 to the 30 kilograms. Obviously we're gonna use standard notation throughout in, in astrophysics because there's lots of big numbers, small numbers, all over the place. So standard notation is, is what we're gonna be using day in, day out. Um, so that's the uh, amount of mass contained in the sun. Now, having said that, you know, you use standard notation most of the time for SI units, so we will be using SI units, so the unit of mass being the kilogram here. Very often we want a much more convenient unit uh, to, to scale and compare everything to. So that's what is happening here. So here I want to introduce the first of these uh, new sort of astrophysical units, if you like. Uh, so this symbol here represents a solar mass. So this would be stated as one solar mass, i.e. the mass of the sun. So this symbol here, uh, the, the sort of over the dot in the middle, uh, is the sort of accepted symbol uh, for the sun, okay? And so whenever you see this symbol, it's referring to a, a property of the sun. So we're gonna see a few of these in a moment. Okay. So this is the, so M with a subscript like this is the, is the one solar mass. Now something I'd like you to, you know, sort of think about every time you, you see something new in this course is, well, ask yourself the question, how do we know that, okay? Now, there are gonna be times when, you know, won't be able to answer that properly because we haven't done completed the entire course yet. I think by the time we get to the end of the course, then you should have a good idea about how we've uh, observed and measured uh, everything we've been talking about. But for now, you know, I'll, I'll just put some placeholders here. And so once we come to those in the course, you might be able to come back and, and have a look at this again. Okay. So how do we know how much mass is in the sun? Well, if you want to measure the mass of anything, in an astrophysical setting, you know, there isn't a big set of scales out there. Um, the only way you can do it is to use the fact that the mass of an object determines its gravitational influence on another object, okay? So in terms of the sun, uh, the obvious thing to use 
are the planets orbiting around uh, the sun, okay, including our own. Okay, so this little GIF animation here shows you uh, the planets orbiting the sun, and they are all kept in place, and their motion is determined by, basically by the mass of the sun in the center of the solar system. So obviously this was worked out uh, you know, several centuries ago now in terms of uh, Johannes Kepler, who worked out um, the sort of mo the motion, the laws that govern the motion of the uh, planets around uh, the sun. And later, uh, Isaac Newton came along with his law of gravity, which allowed basically uh, the combination of those two things to really uh, tell you the um, mass of the sun. So yeah, we will deal with Kepler's law uh, later in the module when we when we look at you know measuring the mass of other stars. Okay, so the next property we'd like to uh, look at is the distance to the sun. So how far away is the sun uh, from the Earth? So that is 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. Okay, 93 million miles in old units, but you know in uh, SI units, uh, 1.5 10 to the 11 meters. And that is also given a special name. It's, it's given uh, the name of one AU, and an AU stands for astronomical unit. It's kind of a sort of a strange sort of name, but that's the the sort of yardstick, if you like, that we would uh, use for uh, measuring the, uh, the distance from the Earth to the Sun. Now, the Earth's orbit is slightly elliptical, so this is an average distance, but you know, let's not worry too much about the details. Okay, and so uh, quite often we will we will come back to using the uh, uh, the AU, the astronomical unit, as a, as a measure of distance. It won't be the most common one we use there. So uh, again, how is it measured? Well, sort of similar to before really. Um, once you've got the kind of measure of the solar system with Kepler's laws, which tell you about the relative spacing of uh, the planets uh, from the sun, if you can then measure the distance to one or other of the planets accurately, you can then get uh, the, dis the actual absolute distance. And so that was done again uh, you know, uh, hundreds of years ago now, really, uh, at various degrees of accuracy. Um, so people would, uh, there's a method called uh, parallax. Again, you would, that will come up in uh, workshop two when we look at the method of parallax measuring distances. Um, but basically, people have measured the parallax to Mars and Venus, and because of that, you then know the distance uh, of the Earth to the Sun. Uh, and, and very accurately. These days, in modern times, of course, you can actually measure that distance by bouncing radar signals off the sun or anything like that, and that gives you a very accurate answer. Okay, so the next property is the size of the sun. So what's its uh, diameter or radius here, I'm quoting. Okay, so the radius of the sun, just again, assuming it's a perfect sphere, which is, is pretty close, uh, it's seven times 10 to the eight meters. So uh, again, we then uh, introduce a new unit called uh, the solar radius, which is capital R with this uh, subscript behind it. And so this is one solar radius, seven times 10 to the eight meters. So that's actually fairly easy to measure once, you, um, once you've worked out the uh, distance to the sun, because it's very easy to measure the uh, angle uh, subtended by the sun on the sky. And you can do that just with, well, obviously you have to be very careful not to look at the sun with any optical device, but um, yeah, you can find a way to measure the uh, angular diameter. You can then use that angle, this distance, to work out this actual uh, length in meters there. And uh, we will have a go doing this kind of thing in, uh, in workshop for one. Okay, so the final property I want to um, give now is something called the luminosity of the sun. So this is really a measure of its power. Okay, so you can see the units are in watts here. So it's a measure of the power in terms of its radiation output. So another way of expressing the watt is uh, joules per second. So how many joules per second of radiation energy is being emitted by the sun okay, every second. 
And so it's four times 10 to the 26 watts. Okay, so that's an awful lot of light bulbs, as you can imagine. Okay. And as you can see again here, we are introducing the, um, uh, the uh, another unit. This is the solar luminosity. And so this is um, measured, uh, or this is just, uh, again, capital L subscript, uh, the O with a dot. And so that is one solar luminosity. So how do we measure the luminosity of the sun? Again, this will become clearer after a few more lectures. Um, but you know, illustrated here, again, you don't need any of this detail at all. This is just for illustrative purposes. Um, so you're not left wondering, you know, but in the lab, you can set up an experiment where you measure the amount of energy coming into a particular device where, where that will actually measure the amount of energy. And then because you now know how far away the sun is and we know how radiation travels uh, across space, basically an inverse square law comes in there, you can scale that back up to work out the total amount of energy emitted by the sun. Okay, so again, all of these things in brackets and the diagrams, you don't need to worry about the details here at the moment. The, the point of this first part was really to introduce these particular uh, numbers and notations. Again, you won't need to remember any of these numbers. Uh, you'll be able to look them up for any, any assessments and that kind of thing already be given uh, in the question. Okay, so um, just to get lead us into the next part a little bit uh, and also to get you active and doing some calculations. Um, we haven't talked about what the sun is made of yet, but uh, to a good approximation, the sun is basically pure hydrogen. Um, now, because it's so hot, it's really pure ionized hydrogen. So with each hydrogen atom has its electron uh, stripped off it. So basically it's, it's just made of protons, if you like. Um, so uh, just have a think. You've got the mass of the sun that I've given you there. Um, if you could, uh, we're gonna have a, have a break at this point. If you could uh, go away, uh, calculate how many protons uh, are in the sun. Obviously you'll need to look up a bit of information uh, to do that. Uh, and um, on the other side of the break, uh, we'll come back, come back with an answer for that. Okay, so that's the end of the first part and uh, see you on the other side of the break. <laughs>